Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. And I pray that our time together in God's word today is a blessing to all of us, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin today with a reading from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that he has redeemed them from the power of the foe and has gathered them from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. Some wandered in the desolate wilderness, finding no way to a city where they could live. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits failed within them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He rescued them from their distress. He led them by the right path to go to a city where they could live. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all humanity, for he has satisfied the thirsty and filled the hungry with good things. David had proposed that he should build a house for the Lord. The Lord instead promised that he, the Lord, would build a house for David. In our Old Testament reading for today, we hear King David's uh, prayer of thanks to the Lord in response to such a great promise. Then King David went in, sat in the Lord's presence, and said, Who am I, Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? What you have done so far was a little thing to you, Lord God, for you have also spoken about your servant's house in the distant future. And this is a revelation for mankind, Lord God. What more can David say to you? You know your servant, Lord God. Because of your word and according to your will, you have revealed all these great things to your servant. This is why you are great, Lord God. There is no one like you, and there is no God besides you, as all we have heard confirms. And who is like your people Israel? God came to one nation on earth in order to redeem a people for himself, to make a name for himself, and to perform for them great and awesome acts, driving out nations and their gods before your people you redeemed for yourself from Egypt. You established your people Israel to be your own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Now, Lord God, fulfill the promise forever that you have made to your servant and his house. Do as you have promised, so that your name will be exalted forever, when it is said, The Lord of armies is God over Israel. The house of your servant David will be established before you, since you, Lord of armies, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant when you said, I will build a house for you. Therefore your servant has found the courage to pray this prayer to you. Lord God, you are God. Your words are true and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, please bless your servant's house, so that it will continue before you forever. For you, Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing, your servant's house will be blessed forever. In our reading from Paul's first letter to the Christians in Corinth today, we hear Paul's encouragement that we should do all things for the glory of God, and we also hear his instructions about how men and women can work together within the church. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. No one is to seek his own good, but the good of the other person. Eat everything that is sold in the meat market without raising questions for the sake of conscience, since the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. If any of the unbelievers invites you over and you want to go, eat everything that is set before you without raising questions for the sake of conscience. But if someone says to you, this is food from a sacrifice, do not eat it out of consideration for the one who told you and for the sake of conscience. I do not mean your own conscience, but the other person's. For why is my freedom judged by another person's conscience? If I partake with thanksgiving, why am I criticized because of something for which I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, 
do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I also try to please everyone in everything, not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of many, so that they may be saved. Imitate me, as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you because you remember me in everything and hold fast to the traditions just as I have delivered them to you. But I want you to know that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of the woman, and God is the head of Christ. Every man who prays or prophesies with something on his head dishonors his head. Every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, since that is one the same as having her head shaved. For if a woman doesn't cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off of her head or her head shaved, let her head be covered. A man should not cover his head because he is the image and glory of God. So too, woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from woman, but woman came from man. Neither was man created for the sake of woman, but woman for the sake of man. This is why a woman should have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. In the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man, and man is not independent of woman. For just as woman came from man, so man comes through woman, and all things come from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is, it is a disgrace to him, but that if a woman has long hair, it is her glory? For her hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to argue about this, we have no other custom, nor do the churches of God. Our writing for today comes from the epitome of the Formula of Concord, Article 7, in which we hear uh, the biblical teach, some of the biblical teachings about the Lord's Supper. We believe, teach, and confess that in the Holy Supper, Christ's body and blood are truly and essentially present, and that they are truly distributed and received with the bread and wine. We believe, teach, and confess that the words of Christ's testament are not to be understood in any other way than the way they read, according to the letter. So the bread does not signify Christ's absent body and the wine his absent blood, but because of the sacramental union, the bread and wine are truly Christ's body and blood. Now about the consecration, we believe, teach, and confess that no work of man or recitation of the minister produces this presence of Christ's body and blood in the Holy Supper. Instead, this presence is to be credited only and alone to the almighty power of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the same time, we also believe, teach, and confess unanimously that in the use of the Holy Supper, the words of Christ's institution should in no way be left out. Instead, they should be publicly recited, as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, the cup of blessing that we bless, and so forth. This blessing occurs through the, through the reciting of Christ's word. We believe, teach, and confess that Christ's body and blood are received with the bread and wine, not only spiritually through faith, but also orally, yet not in a Capernaitic way, but in a supernatural heavenly way because of the sacramental union. Christ's words clearly show this when Christ gives direction to take, eat, and drink, as was also done by the apostles. For it is written in Mark chapter 14, verse 23, and they all drank of it. St. Paul likewise says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? That is to say, he who eats this bread eats Christ's body, which also the chief ancient teachers of the church, Chrysostom, Cyprian, Leo I, Gregory, Ambrose, Augustine, unanimously testify. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Greet the Rising Sun. Lord, I will today on your love rely. Let no evil thought cloud the clear blue sky. Joyful and content with life's simpler things, knowing all I need from your kindness springs. And we pray. 
O oh God, by the patient suffering of your only begotten Son, you have beaten down the pride of the old enemy. Now help us, we humbly pray, to imitate all that our Lord has, has of his goodness borne for our sake, that after his example, we may bear with patience all that is adverse to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. God be with you today, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.